fiction, science fiction, horror, fantasy, crime, LGBT, thriller. You have now entered the house of mystery with your hosts, Eric Shapiro, David North Martino. John Copenhaver and Al Warren. Heard on KCP 106.5 FM Los Angeles. 102.3 FM Riverside. And 105.0 AM Palm Springs. Joining us today, we're talking hope and despair, and we're talking with the author, Alan Wild. Thank you for taking the time today, Al. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm excited. Uh, calm down. <laughs> says, uh, stay in control, okay? So after after we get off air, we get wild, okay? Oh, man. Oh, I'm the wild one. You got the wrong guy interviewing. Um, now, so you wrote this book. So what, okay, let's start with who Alan Wild is and, and, and how you got into uh, writing. Well, Alan Wild is actually a pen name for myself and I really started writing a while ago when I started blogging and it was just the natural progression and I decided to put my life experience in a book and call it fiction. Oh. So so are you taking um real things that happened to you in your life and kind of putting it into this uh, fiction book. Absolutely. Um, Rising some of the the history from when I was younger, a lot of the things that happened to me really just made me the person who I am. So I figured sharing that would be a good motivation for healing, I guess. And long story short, it worked. And so I just published the book, and it, it turned out well, I think. So that's interesting. So how did you know, like, what particular things did you want to talk about in your book, um, you know, without being too detailed, but what was it about your life that you thought should you should share? Well, one, well the two main characters, they share different qualities. So... It's not like there's one specific situation that's happened. I mean, there's several situations that have happened, but it's all mixed up and muddled, And but that's life. So I think with the book, one of the things that is a main player for one of the characters, Noah, as a child, he was, he was burnt by boiling coffee and that also happened with me Um, it was a horrible situation and it was at the hands of an abusive evil person and that also happened and Alan, I was kind of so you touched on this, but the question I was going to ask was: is it is it mostly the relationships that you're exploring in here? Because when I read your book, I did notice there are some abusive and deeply traumatic relationships kind of haunting your protagonists. I mean, is that kind of what you're interested in exploring? Absolutely, absolutely. Do you feel like that's? Do you feel? And you said you do feel like that that was like a healing experience for you. It was, because putting it down in writing, it was really just the step forward. And it allowed me to reassess and really take a step back and just Mm -hmm. decide that, you know, this is not something that I had control over. It's not something that I really could control. And as an adult, you know, we all want to think that we have control of our entire lives, and that's just not the case. And that was the situation with my characters. Mm-hmm. They really had no control. I had no control as a child. 
did you did you make changes to some of it? Because I would say, like, I think when people do this, uh, one of the things that people frequently do is empower themselves or the characters in a way that they weren't empowered. So did you make those kinds of changes? I did. I did. A lot of times with uh, Noah, he really he really drew in and shut the world off. And that's a situation that I it would have been a natural progression for that character to become reclusive and be a person who really didn't reach out to the world. But that's not me. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly how I made him, because if if it were to happen to someone else, I would imagine that's exactly what what they would do. They would just shut the world off. But with me, I, I just it's more lackadaisical. I'm not necessarily the outgoing person, but I'm also not reclusive. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'm just somewhere in the middle. I'm, I'm wondering, um, it, it sounds like it's pretty personal. Uh, why, why would you go into a fiction writing rather than just doing a true story, like a nonfiction with your story? I wanted to take the liability out of the situation. I I can't really say who I didn't change the name of, but there is a person in the book who I did not change the name of, and it was kind of a jab. Um, I really wanted him to feel the pain, even though he probably isn't even with us anymore, but um, I I just didn't change the name, and I wanted to leave it as a fiction story because not all aspects are completely true. So, I mean, the the personalities all are different. So Oliver, the one of the other main characters, he has some personal, personality traits that, that I have and personality traits that my husband has. So it's, it's really gray area. That's why I needed to leave it as a fiction story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, it makes sense. I just, I just wonder. Uh, I, I'm trying to learn how to write uh, um, fiction now that I've been on true crime, and this last story's got me so uh, um, uh, pumped up that I'm, I'm, I'm over true crime. So, uh, I just, I just, I'm trying to get some uh, feedback here on how you do this. <laughs> and Alan, yeah. What in terms of the the mystery itself, the crime was that also taken from personal experience? No, that was that was completely fictitious. It, okay. The, so the murders did not happen. Um, the from what I understand, the the villain in the story, he was actually he was actually wanted for murder, but as for you know, any other murders after that, I, I was not aware of that. That was completely something that I made up, and it, it just worked out in the book. Wow. Well, why did you include murders? Like, why did you make it a murder mystery? And and not so much on detail, but what, what, what drew you into that, writing that? Why wasn't it just a drama or something like that? Like, what what, what inspired you to go that direction? You know, I I didn't really have it planned to start with. I just started writing, and when I was thinking what would happen if, and then the plan started coming out onto paper, and it was really interesting how you take a look at some people who are really strung out on drugs. They're looking to make easy cash, and that's one of the situations in the book where they really just they're they're taking everything that they can and they're wanting to really step over the the villain in the 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 book and they want to take everything they can and just sell it and buy more drugs but um it didn't end up that way they ended up being murdered wow um so let's let's get to you as in what what are your inspirations as a writer? I have 
a very active and vivid imagination, and it it just gets me carried away. So putting it down on writing really gets control of my thoughts. And I, I could be walking down the street and I could see somebody standing there and I already have another book just by looking at a person standing there. It, it, it's interesting. I can draw inspiration from a picture. I can talk to a person and just a little bit of information from them is enough to create a character and a storyline. Wow. So I've got to stay away from have, being in a coffee shop with you. <laughs> I'm telling all sorts of stories about me. Oh, my God. That would be terrible. Um, well, that's cool. But uh, So are you going to um, go into other other types of writing as well? Is it, is it gonna, are you going to stick with crime fiction? Are you going to go into um, sci-fi, fantasy, or even, you know, ecstasy? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I don't have any set plans. Well, other than I've got hope and despair, and then I'm working on finishing up my second book, which is actually 1.5 in the series. But as for any other genres, I'm completely open. I definitely will follow wherever my imagination takes me, but I'm not going to just keep myself in the murder mystery genre and just stick with it. Well, and you answered part of my question, but I'm curious, so like how many books are you seeing for this investigation series? And then since, am I right? Is, this is your first book, is that right? It is, yes. What would you say, like, for someone like Al who's thinking about making the jump to uh, a fiction book, like what would you say you took away from writing this first one? Like what were some things you learned from it? You know, the technical standpoint, I definitely would follow, every, I mean, and I'm sure you know this because you already have published books, but make sure everything is set up first. And that goes for anybody who is publishing their first book. Definitely make sure whatever word processor you're using is completely set up and pay attention to your writing. Don't just write. Um, you know, make sure grammar is correct and then that will save you so much time later on down the road. And for me, it was, it was a learning experience because my creativity came out faster than I could type. So in the beginning, I just typed. There were no paragraphs, and it was just a big model to mess. And so I had spent weeks correct correcting it and making sure everything was right. But with starting out writing, I definitely would work on a very loose structure and go with that. But... For me, personally, it did not help to write out all of the – well, okay, so I did character interviews with each of my characters, and to me, that was too entailed. That was too much work. The characters really came to me, and their char characteristics came to me, I didn't need to waste the time on doing the character interviews, and that that would be a good step. It really depends on the person and how much they plan, how much they research. I personally just went by the seat of my pants with a very loose structure. Wow, that um, sounds like too much work. <laughs> <laughs> So no, so I, I, it's, it, I just find that so you're, when, when you say uh, character interviews, what exactly do you mean? Well, I downloaded a character interview from the internet, and it basically asked questions like, it started out with what their zodiac sign was and what their interests are, hair color, height, 
weight and a lot of the information that you would probably find from, say, a, a grinder or a dating site, to me, it was a little intrusive for the characters. I wanted to go into detail about personalities and really explore each person, each character, and really bring out their good qualities without pointing them out. So the character interviews would just ask so many different questions. More of the corporate games that you would play, you know, they would ask you, what is the best sandwich you've had? And you would have it in, how many would you take to a deserted island? Stuff like that. And it it, it helped me a little bit, but it wasn't what what got me to writing the the story and and actually the character interviews only led me to a point i took some some advice and i just really ran with it somebody said when you're experiencing write, writer's block just write don't stop just write and so one day I was sitting at my table. I just, I felt horrible and I couldn't figure out what to write, where to take the characters, what to do with them next. And so I decided to write and to make the most boring situation exciting. And it, it was, it was interesting, the process, because it was a simple situation. I had gotten up in the middle of the night to get a drink of water, and I was leaning up against the counter, and all of a sudden I saw a light coming up the stairs. And just as I looked back, the light had illuminated someone, and then they disappeared. Well, it was my teenage daughter... <laughs> who was sneaking up to her room. <laughs> but I was able to write and get it to a point where it was exciting. And that really got me motivated to start back on the book and just go with it. How much time do you write in a day? Or what do you think a good day of writing would be? Hmm. Well, I would love to just do nothing but writing. I think eight to ten hours a day would be great. But I've got so many things going on at all times. I'm, you know, I usually, I told myself that I was going to start scheduling my tasks and duties. I would spend three days writing and I would do, you know, the rest, the websites and marketing all the rest of the days, but that doesn't work. So I just, I would say I spend maybe five, six hours a day writing. Yeah. Yeah, and it's tough because you, you can't just turn it on um, when you want to write, when you're feeling inspired, or can you? Does it just, you can just sit down and say, I'm going to write today at 9 to, to 12 today. That's it? Or do you have to do something else? Well, no, it doesn't work for me that way either. It's just, it's, I am a procrastinator just by nature. And <laughs> if something else happens, I just, I go with it. So, but I set a goal and usually that's what um, helps me out. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't, I know what you mean. Cause some weeks I can have a great week and it's turned on and everything's going well. And then the next week, um, I'm at Starbucks. <laughs> so Al, you don't, Al, you don't sit down and write a certain amount of like, no. you, you don't have like an hour that you sit down and write every day or something? No, and it's either all or nothing. When I turn it on, like, oh. like, well, for instance, like two weeks ago, I started on the Sunday. I felt like writing. I wrote till the Saturday, and I got 23,000 words written in oh six my days. Goodness. And then I'll go two weeks and wow. write nothing, so or write Holy 50 God. words. 
Um, I think that's because I'm autistic, and I think there's something in my brain that if you trigger me to go on something, I can go on it. And once once it works, if it's working, it's detailed, and I can just rip with it. Uh, and that's not just with writing. I find that's with cleaning or with anything. But but uh-huh. when I'm out of sorts, it no, it's not going to happen. Hmm. You know, it's weird. I'm a weirdo. <laughs> no, that's not. I think that's so interesting. I, and Alan, you said you make goals for yourself. What kind of goals do you set for yourself? What I do basically, I started out with the book. I I think my main goal was to finish something because I had three different three different books already started and in the series I already have four four of the books started. Um but I needed to finish something and that was my main goal is just mm-hmm. Finish the book. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that's one goal. Finish the book and then promote the book. And just you know, I do have lists of tasks that I need to do on a daily basis. That helps me stay on track and keep going throughout the day. But you know, something that I could check off and feel like I've accomplished something throughout the day. It really helps to get me going the next day. Well, that's interesting. Um, so what do you do for research for your book? Like, how do you find um, information out about, uh, let's say, different times or, or locations or whatever you're doing in your book? Well, with the, the time and location, I structure the series out of Denver, Colorado. That is where I've, I've grown up, and I was born and raised in Denver, so pretty much know everything about it. So I didn't have to do a lot of research about that. And I have some good friends that are police officers, investigators. So that helped me. But the research that I had to do really was on drugs. Now, while I have some people in my life that have been addicted to drugs, it really was eye-opening when I started to do the research and the drug use and the types of drugs, that that alone was just flooring for me because, you know, you don't expect so much, so much detail to be out there on the Internet. I mean, it it was available to me, and I was just looking for the information, but if somebody was using that as, you know, for other reasons, um, it, it, it could be disturbing. But for me, I just use the Internet to research the, the drugs and sometimes the procedures. And as for the locations, I did have to figure out where the police station was located. I've never been there, so it was, it was interesting. Were there other um, like interesting things that you came across that you had to research that you didn't have any you would like never even considered looking up before? <laughs> well, besides the drugs, not really. Um, not really. Yeah. yeah the the mother of Noah is um, she fell and broke her hip. So I realized that while while she can possibly move and take care of herself putting her into an assisted living was kind of harsh um i did have to move my own mother to assisted living so i have a good foundation to to start with that but when i was looking further into it i was not aware that there was assisted living on an interim basis so it's not something that is longer than a year um, and I didn't know that existed so when you write um, and and you've done your book and you you're going to be doing other books uh, do you have kind of a something you want to get across to people that read it other than the story itself is there an underlying message you know 
the biggest message that I want to have the readers take away is that there are, as a human race, we're all different. And just because one person has different abilities than the other, it doesn't discount them. And that's the main message. You know, each person has their own qualities the main character, Oliver, has a learning disability, OCD, and he is a hoarder, um, an organized hoarder, but a hoarder. Um, so it, it's it's automatically, a, you know, when you hear learning disability, it's ha- it has a negative condensation. So a lot of people think about you know, learning disabilities, but I look at it as a different ability. The character has to figure out a different way to process, and it takes him a little longer, but that also helps him solve problems, and it helps him solve crimes. So I think the main thing is just to take each person and their abilities and their qualities and don't necessarily count them out because they have a diagnosis. Yeah, that's good advice. What's um, Who's your favorite writer? Or do you have one or do you have a favorite type of book you like to read? I actually do, and he's right there with you. Oh, my Greg God. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. There you go. Thank you. That is really generous. Take a bow. Yeah, that is really good. <laughs> he'll he'll sign your chest for you. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, I do have a question for you about kind of about your personal ties to the book. Like you talked about the trauma behind it, but I know I know like you in your life in your personal life, you've made some pretty remarkable efforts to help other people. You know, help the people around you. Um, did you translate any of the positive things that you of those efforts you've made to your characters or to the story? Did you have them take similar actions? Like I'm thinking about the relationships you've built with people around you. Absolutely. I, I try and so personally, I believe that we need to help each other and as a human race or writers or whatever, we really we need to help each other, and that's what's missing in the world. So with my character, Oliver, he is he is the natural caretaker. And as I sit back and I watch my husband, he is, he is the person who is the caretaker. He is right there helping even when he's not asked. So that, that helps me. But um, also when you're able to help someone and they benefit from it, it it helps you also. So definitely give everything you can to helping other people because it will come back to you someday. Wow. So now has, has this, um, has the world in this last year affected you at all? Like do you find yourself uh, off your normal patterns and writing and and uh, the way you think and even the way you write you know like with the pandemic and the, and and all the rioting and picketing and protesting and uh, uh dumb donald and all that sort of stuff how I, it, <laughs> no, no no but you know does it have like a stress and therefore it affects you or how what what's it done for you you know i was actually thinking about this just this morning, and I am somewhat of an introvert, and the pandemic has helped me because with so much going on in the world, I was able to shut it off and just focus on the inside, and that that helped me to finish the book, to start writing the other books, it really it really did help but when the news is on and you know i make a comment on one post 
on Facebook uh -oh. that is political, you get 25 others. So mm -hmm. that to me is very stressful. I try and channel that stress into the characters and I really work to get them to a point where they process that challenge and overcome it. So it helps me in the long run, even though, you know, as a person, you know, watching all of the things that are happening in 2020, it, it's discouraging. So I have to, I have to work hard to stay positive and optimistic. Yeah, yeah. So it's that time. Uh, so what's your website? I actually have several. Um, the one that is my main website is alanwild.us, and that really is where I've, I do interviews with other authors, and I have a book on my website. And oh, I, in a former life, I was a photographer. I still have all of my equipment, and I... I'm still open to being a photographer. It's, you know, it just doesn't happen. So um, I have some of my work on that page as well. But I also have hope-and-despair.website, and that's a site de devoted strictly to my book. And I will be doing blog posts, which are actually stories of the characters. Um, so that will be just odd posts every now and then. Fantastic. Uh, we'll have that up on our website as well, and we're going to have your book up there. So if people are listening, they can do one click and, and, and find you, and uh, that'll, that'll be great. Hey, so you're going to keep on taking pictures then and, and doing photography? It says portrait studio photography. So you you really like that? I do. It's great to work with people. You meet some really unusual people along the way. And it helps me to, you know, just experience and get out there and it, express my creativity. I, I like doing on location shoots, but I really enjoy the studio work. But I don't have a studio. So I set up wherever it's necessary. I've I've shot in some really bizarre locations um, that helped to to really expand my creativity. I mean, for example, I was called to a house, and once I got there, I really should have just said, no, nope, can't do it, bye. Yeah. But oh. this, this house <laughs> was so small. And they had, they had furniture crammed in it. There was literally no space for me to set up. So I had to be creative. And I put one of the stands on the sofa, the other stand on a, a chair, and just went with it. I mean, it, it worked. The <clears throat> guy loved the pictures. <clears throat> there was more touching up that I had to do, but it was, it was a challenge. Wow, and I bet cool. you, I bet you get inspired by that too, because you said you you can see people or see situations or listen to people and get really, um, you know, an imagination going over that. So maybe the photography helps you as well. It does, definitely. I I learn so much from the individuals I photograph just by small talk. And there was an individual that I, I worked with, and he came back at least six times. And he enjoyed working with me. I enjoyed working with him. And through talking with him, this guy had thrown so much money into his education, and he had like six degrees. And I couldn't figure out why he wanted to stay being a model slash stripper. And mm -hmm. it, it was gratifying for him 
to be able to do that, but he could he could be a doctor, a therapist, whatever he chose to be. But just listening to his his story, figuring out where he wanted to go, I mean that to me was it was priceless. It was definitely a good situation for me to draw from. Wow. Yeah, 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 I guess that's true. You never know who you're going to meet, and when you find out the story, it it, it can be uh, eye-opening. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, this has been a, a great little conversation. Um, I really appreciate you coming on. The book we're talking about is Hope and Despair. Our guest has been the author, Alan Wilde. Thank you for being here. Thank you. To find out more about our show, guests, or to listen to past shows from our archive, please go to www.houseofmysteryradio.com. Show's over for now. Was it as good for you as it was for me? Well, good night. This has been a production of Something Weird Media. I'll be back.